Um, what do we know? Do we have, oop, where we go? There we, okay, you put that in. Um, COVID up to the, uh, there you go, the agenda. Um, do we know if we have any other people on, Ron? Can you see or any other public comments or anything? Uh, yeah, we Is had, uh, yeah, we had Kim was in and we had um, nobody else joining. So we had, it looks like okay. somebody the GMA DV is here. They're doing the live. Right. right. Okay. Okay. No problem. Kim, do you have anything in particular or are you just keeping an eye on us? <laughs> we got to get the warning right, correct? Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Oh, so I, I'm just here because you have a meeting and yeah. I'm here. Right. right. Well, and make sure that we got everything we need on the, on the warning. Um, Let's see, the first one, I, since we're all talking about COVID, is um, we just need to, with uh, as our road crew is working its way one by one through COVID, um, about employee leave time uh, when they've been following the COVID uh, precautions. And I guess simply the issue is, is do we, uh, are we gonna require them to use ETO or not and, and we pay them? And I'm Brian, what do, you, what do you think? You're our liaison there. Yeah, um, my feeling is, is uh, if they're protecting the rem remaining part of their crew, I think it, uh, it um, it's a good idea to, uh, to make sure that uh, we pay them to uh, stay apart so we have a crew, so we don't lose everybody. I've been real fortunate, as Mark mentioned, that uh, uh, it's been sporadic throughout the crew. So it hasn't uh, uh, disabled the, the crew from going out and doing their work and keeping the road cleared. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. They've been, uh, and fortunately there haven't been any gigantic storms while, while this was happening, so. Um, we're we're getting through it. I, uh, Roly, Dave, what do you think? I agree with Brian. The only thing I don't think, if they haven't been vaccinated, I think they should use their own time. But if they've been vaccinated, I think that the town wouldn't have no problem paying for them. But that's just my opinion. I don't know if everybody's been vaccinated, but if they have, fine. But if they haven't, we ought to really look at that because I know a lot of businesses <clears throat> are paying their people, but if they haven't been vaccinated, they're not they're not uh, paying them. They're making them use their ETO time or personal time or whatever it is. Yeah, um, I agree with you completely. And Jason is not vaccinated. Jason's not. Jason was not vaccinated. Well, uh, that's just my opinion. It's up to everybody I, else what they want to do. Too. I, I, I agree with you, Roly. And, and I, I, I'll put my vote in for you, Sue, and Roly. Yeah. Uh, and we're agreeing with Brian. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a, I think it's a small way for businesses. I don't know whether it's the town or businesses to, uh, to acknowledge folks taking that step of, of not just protecting themselves, but protecting other people as well. And it's a little form of a thank you, I think. But I, I don't know if that's legal or not, but I know a lot of people are doing that. Yeah, that, I was just gonna say that Roland, there's a certain <clears throat> amount of uh, privacy rights and you know procedures and just things that don't wanna cross other, other statutory, yes, yeah, thresholds on this kind of thing. So if you if you want to go to that kind of a town policy, I would just condition it on the um, town attorney review. Okay. Yeah, I would I would do that, and and you know we could you could I'm sure we could add something like um, to be uh, to be eligible to be paid for that time, you need to show your proof of vaccination. Okay. You know, then that's. If somebody doesn't show it, then they either don't want to collect it or they are not vaccinated. And that I think is a kind of a sidesteppy around the privacy thing. So yeah, quick question, would that be for all departments or just the highway? 
I, I think it should be for everybody. Okay. I, I agree. Yeah. yeah, I don't think you can segregate. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you can uh, differentiate. Yeah, yeah. Every, every, everybody's yeah. a town employee. Just wanted to make sure. Yeah, no, no, good. Always good to make, make sure about those things. Um, okay, do we need to vote on that, Ron, or is that the? No, I, I, you'll vote on a policy if the town attorney. Yeah, that's what I okay, super. Um, highway mileage report. Uh, really simple. Just need a motion to approve the 2021 highway mileage report with no changes in 21. We had uh, we got close on Beam Road, but um, that blew up into a little bit more. So hopefully it'll be a 22 change. But all you yeah. have to do is testify that there are no changes. Uh, you can authorize Susan to sign the form or or three or more of you can sign. I think Kim and I were talking about getting uh, three or more board members to sign the warning tomorrow uh, by stopping by the town office as you can. So uh, the, the mileage certificate, the warning oh, and, be right there. Yep. and a bond resolution are hanging out there. So if we can get three or more on all three of those documents, that'd be perfect. Okay. That sounds like a plan. And okay, just so that you know, tomorrow, if you're going to come in to do that, the earlier, the better. I have to have everything posted before the end of the day tomorrow. Okay. Just so that I don't have to come in on Sunday to do it. Okay. <laughs> Sunday's a real deadline. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, we really don't okay. have to go until Saturday, Kim. <laughs> Um, okay, to get, let's see. Get okay, we'll try to do it uh, early in the morning. Well, mid morning. Okay, to get back to the article on hand here, I'll make a motion that we accept the highway mileage report as um, written for 2021. Okay, Second. yeah, okay. Um, need Second. any more discussion? No, nope. good. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Now, the warning. Got that? Have people printed it out? Do people have it? Mm -hmm. Here's the, here's your screenshot. <laughs> I have a question about the warning. Sure. Am I muted? Okay. Uh, no, Article good. three. Article three. Okay. And it's about uh, the select board uh, contracting to uh, um, employ somebody to do the uh, uh, listing and stuff for uh, lister. Um, we're. I'm still kind of vague on uh, where we left off on that. Um, I know back in, I think it was our May 3rd uh, meeting, um, is it what we talked about with the town assessor position? It was something we discussed about hiring somebody until uh, the end of the fiscal year to get the work done, but I don't remember having any other discussion about that. Well we discussed if we didn't have listers, we didn't really have a choice. And right now we don't have any listers and no one's running for it. Which sort of leaves us no option. What happened with the uh, CERC? I know we, we talked about uh, putting out an ad or something like that or doing something. I'm just wondering where we went with that. I'm just looking for a refresher so I know where we're yeah. at with it. Um, I, I know we've, we've put out a number of things looking and saying that we're looking for listers. Um, I have, we had a list of two or three people that we wanted to see if we could convince they should do it. And I had long heartfelt conversations with them and you'll notice we still don't have any listers. Um, so I don't, Ron, what else did we do? We must yeah. Well, it's, it's an annual elected position. So every year there's elected positions that come up in the last, I guess it's almost the third, <clears throat> you know, third year in a row where we haven't had people running to fill right. the spots. And the petition deadline or the nomination deadline was earlier this week and nobody submitted a petition. So Matt's 
term, if you will, is, is running out and then we'll have nobody. So last year to fill the, the void, because there wasn't a quorum of a board of listers, we signed a contract with NEMREC, which is an annual contract and they do all the services for, it looks like about the same price or a little less overall that we were paying with a appointed board of listers or elected point of board, elected <laughs> board of listers. The contracted professional assessor is the alternate under state law. So if you don't have a board of listers, you have to uh, hire a contracted professional assessor and the cost of that service is is about we're not changing the budget because of the change we're budgeting 11,000 and that's pretty much what we had in the budget with the elected listers so it's really it, it's almost a societal thing with with some of these municipal positions people just not wanting to keep up with the training and the education and the schedule and the demands for really what's a part-time job. So that, that is going to be a problem across a lot of different town positions. And this is just the beginning of it, I think, where some of the historical town services that were done by pretty much volunteer residents, uh, you know, for whatever reason, mostly time constraints and education and training constraints, uh, don't we don't have the bodies anymore. And the only option is contracted services. And the state law actually matches that. They said, if you can't make it work with the residents on a lister basis through the election, uh, the select board has no choice but to hire a contracted person to do it because we're, we're bound by the state law to report a grand list for the state school taxes and everything else. Yeah, and I'm glad it doesn't uh, affect the budget. Like you said, I like that. Yeah. So, and then we're, we're watching that. This is our first year, Brian. So, you know, we'll have to watch that, but right now it's about 11,000 or less per year to do the same, um, you know, product, if you will, our statutory requirements, I guess is what you would call it. I do have okay. a, a, hey, Ron, I had a question on that. If my term is up, am I still going to be considered or whatever an assessor as an alternate? Yeah, I think that's right. Whoever? Yeah, you're holding sort of two titles now. You're still elected, right. and, and if the voters dissolve the board of listers or eliminate, I forget the, eliminate, I think, in the article, uh, then you are immediately replaced by the contracted person. The, the statute right. allows like a little transition if we don't have a contracted list or assessor right. uh, for 45 days or something like that. But uh, because we already have one, you, you would end on town meeting day with the uh, passing of article three, uh, the select board appointed you separately to assistant to the town assessor. That will continue if you wanna continue there. Okay. I was just curious on how that, that yep. worked Yeah, it's, it's like a dual role for now. And then you'll, okay. you'll lose one of them if the article three passes. Okay. Um, this, this, this is one of those, I think it's a great example of hmm, when, when you're not in person. So I can see people reading this and going, I guess my question ultimately is going to be, how do we get enough information to people um, that, um, well, why don't we just stick with the listers? Well, the fact that for three years we haven't and people aren't running for lister and nobody wants the job and we have to have them. Is there, is there, how do we get that information to people, I guess? Yeah, I think I think it's the mailbox or, or the post office yeah. box. I, you know, there's a lot yeah. Of so it's we just do the separate write up and mailing to everybody. I think I think we have to. I mean, it's, yeah. it's it seems fair to give people that either yes. don't have internet, don't check it all the time, or whatever reason, to at least get a piece of paper in the mail from the select board saying, "Hey, how y'all doing? This is what's happening. We know we're not meeting. Yeah. But here's the information we have for you." Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and I want to. I want to thank Matt for the work he did, stepping up to the plate too. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank I'll, you. I'll, I'll stay on as a as an appointed assessor because obviously Cassandra needs my help sometimes because I know the town better. So that's fine. I just didn't know how it was all going to fit in there because I was going to do a justice of the peace thing, but I did not want to screw up 
you know, no, it, it won't, it won't, conf happened. it won't conflict with at all. No. Well, right. Because I didn't know if I could, cause on the justice and the peace board, you'd have to, you know, you have to vote on things. So maybe I'll do it next year for the fall. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, it, and you can always, as a JP or with certain things, it's like on the select board or anything, if there's a conflict, you can just recuse yourself from the, from the vote too. Um, oh, just okay. a little bit more on that, just real quick. Yep. Yep. Uh, what we did, Ron and I have been working and we also been looking at other contract options occasionally and different inputs to either keep the price down or maybe get better service or whatever we got to do. We're definitely always up on what we're the, to get the best product for the town. Okay. So we are in communication a lot of times about it. Okay, thank you. Um, Ron, what about Article 4? Yes, so $75,000 of uh, general fund balance for the highway reserve. Uh, this pretty much directly relates to the email that I sent to the board last night where we listed all of those capital projects that are pending and in motion and needing match or needing some uh, engineering services or whatever to keep those going. Uh, we don't typically keep capital project funding uh, as an operating line because we're running those pretty much through the capital reserve. So if we end up with a a big Church Street and Main project, for example, where we're gonna rip up all the sidewalks and put crosswalks in and do stormwater, a lot of that will be funded uh, by transfers from the reserves and you won't see it in the operating budget. So if we can get that amount of money into the reserve, it helps with those projects as well as equipment purchases and other things that you wanna do that are in motion, but aren't defined yet. I think that's the, that's the yeah. part that's hard to explain there. We don't exactly know when we're gonna need the money, but we know we're gonna need the money in order to get you know 80% grant, we need 20% from town resources, yeah. but we don't have that in the operating budget. We have it in the reserve budget. So the, the health of the reserve budgets is really critical to all of your um, plans for capital projects. And I think that's what the 75,000 is, is for. Yeah, that'll, that'll be a fun little write up. <laughs> well, I could I could re really just repeat that email showing people where we're at with yeah. a whole bunch of different projects. Well, yeah, actually, you can. Yeah, yeah, sort of eye opening. Um, okay, Article Five. I see, Ron. I see you got a thousand dollars, and the uh, price that. Uh, HA quoted us was 250,000. Are you allowing $25,000 for permitting? Yeah, so part of the article is for the purchase plus permitting and evaluating the site. Right. So it's all, it's all inclusive of the soil borings and other permit, Act 250 permitting, if you get to that point, so that we can get um, that project developed. It's not just the purchase of the land, it's for you know getting to the point of deciding whether or not um, it's a good investment for the town. I think it's important too that when we put that uh, letter out to the general public, the public that uh, uh, we make sure that uh, they understand the scarcity of the uh, uh, gravel and what it uh, projects for the future for all of us. I'm sure that's gonna be part of it anyways, but I just wanna make sure it was said. Yeah, that's the soil borings part, right? Exactly. And I, that's going to be the bad part about this uh, virtual meeting that that there's not going to be that that time where somebody can jump up in the audience and say, what the hell do we need it for? And time to explain why people are just going to read this. And I know I think I think that is that's true. There's a lot of people that will get the um, a lot of people won't get the town report or won't get the mailing or pay attention to it, but they'll get the ballot and they'll read that one article and they're gonna make sort of a snap decision. And there's there's no time to discuss it, you're right. We could um, maybe maybe one of the, uh, I'll, 
if we, we do the mailing, um, we know we tried last year and we'll do it again this year. We'll try a couple of informational meetings about it, but I'll bet you we can get Roland to let us have a little radio time to talk to. Yeah, that might, that might okay. uh, you know, make a nice uh, broad uh, spread of the information somehow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe before the mailing goes out, somebody can go on and do an interview about the mailing and then say, watch for the mailing. Yeah. 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 Okay. We'll put that as, and we, we figure out the time frame on that. I'm, I'm, uh, when it gets close, let me know. I'm happy to give Roland a call and chat with him. Okay. Now, now we're on five. Uh, when we left the uh, select board meeting the last time, Ron, weren't you going to get a hold of uh, somebody to go up there and do some boring there and the pet? Yeah, the, I mean, Green Mountain Engineering was asked to schedule uh, soil borings for both the existing pit and the 25 acres. Uh, mm -hmm. th those, I, I don't know if they'll be ready, but I'll, we'll try to get those done in February. But it's going to be odd to try to get that information out to voters before town meeting day. <clears throat> but it, it, it seemed to me it would be more factual to tell people there's 80 feet of good gravel there rather than tell them we really don't know what's under the ground. Yeah, we had that discussion at the last meeting about when do you do soil borings and, and when do you buy the land? I remember that the last meeting. <laughs> do, you, mm -hmm. do you buy the land and then wait for the soil borings or do you do the soil borings and then try to buy the land? I don't. Hey, Dave, 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 can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. You know, they've got an excavator yes. down there. You can dig long ways down now with an excavator. You can do some quick boring like that too. Well, that's an idea. But oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> done, I, done it I many think, times. Yeah, but uh, while um, but until I, we get that that board, does that article read that the taxpayers will allow? How long I say that? Would it give, does it give us permission to buy it or just give us the idea to look into the aspects of buying it? It's only, it's only borrowing pr approval. Say yeah, we, it's, it's borrowing approval to buy the land. You still have to make a decision to do it though. The select board would hold, you know, the final say on actually doing it. You're just getting voter approval to borrow. And okay, so so at the end of the day, the bottom line on the budget's got to be if Article Five, if we approve Article Five to buy it, and we won't know what Article Five is until after we do the board sample, so we know if we want to buy it or not. So how are you going to set your your budget? Yeah, so Article Five borrowing would result in a 2024 budget increase if you bought the land. So this gives the voters a chance to participate in your decision whether to actually do it or not. Right. So if, if- So it won't, it won't affect the, I mean, next year, 20, 20, 23, 24. Yeah, Correct. You, but you still right. That, so you have about a year to figure it out if you actually want to, you know, up to a year probably. It depends on how long Manash wants to hold that open for sale. Yeah, but what, what I think I'm trying to say, Ron, is is they're voting on to spend that money, right? To give, no, to give you, so, it, it gives no, you the right. option to spend that money. But in the years past, at the end of the meeting, we'll say all the article passed, your tax rate will be yada, yada, yada. Well, isn't this the, the way that word this may or may not go through? Yeah, so that, right, that, right, right. Any, any, right. This is not a commitment to buy. They're, they're not saying to buy. Absolutely, this is a, a totally a bonding and borrowing question to give you the option to do that and evaluating the site has nothing you know you can always pull the plug on this if the voters find out there's no gravel or you change your mind on it or they have no particular use for any municipal development you can still pull the plug on this and that's that's the tricky part with Manash. Manash may say 
Oh, that's good. You got borrowing approval. Now, what about a purchase and sale agreement? The purchase and sale agreement is going to say, Town of Hyde Park Select Board needs six months to meet with the voters to decide if we're going to buy it. Right. So that's that's that okay, that's so, not so, that's not that part isn't done yet. So it doesn't affect the 22-23 budget. No, not at not at all. I think even if you did a really quick purchase, it would probably be three or four thousand dollars of interest, maybe, if you if you took the money out right away. But I don't I don't see the money coming right away because you want to do your due diligence and get some of these questions answered and have some public input. Okay, so so this does not lock us into buying it. Correct. No, does this, or does Correct. it lock what? us into not buying it? Correct. It's, it's just since we're at town meeting and obviously it's a, it's a chunk of money, um, we need permission. Um, if we decide it's a good idea, we need to already have the permission to move forward. If we didn't, we'd have to do special town meetings and all those sorts of things. Got it, thanks. Okay, do you have appropriate? Then the rest of it is just here's the. Uh, oof. Six, six, and seven are just here's what the here's what the numbers are, and here's here are the installments. Um, are we going to go over the numbers a little bit on the changes, Ron? Yeah. 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 We'll do okay. that next. We're going to get through the article first. And... Yeah. I just wanted to make sure yeah. that we were going to talk. I had a few you questions. Kidding? You kidding? We're, we're saving. We saved the fun part to last. Yeah. Okay. So, like I said, yeah. our Article Seven is the same as you as usual, except for the dates and. Article six could change if you guys uh, look at the budget and you want to change anything, but we'll do that right. next. Okay. I guess I got one question, Susan. Sure. We did talk about an extra man for the highway department. Where is that gonna? It's not come any in? place. Uh huh. It's not any place in the budget. Okay. I mean, is we that just, gonna... we we haven't got it. Okay. They got an excavator. I know. <laughs> we're we're we we said once we got the excavator, in another year we would talk about. An extra men for them, them guys. I think, I think that was that next October, maybe this next this coming October. October. Right. This coming October. No, okay, that's fine. Yeah. I just yeah. wanted to make sure we still all remember that. Oh yeah, no, no, we remember it. It's like, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> yeah, I think that I think that's how we left it. If if they get used to the excavator and they get uh, twenty five percent more work done, um, then it gets harder to maybe add another person if they get that much more efficient. Right. Time will tell. But that's a good, good reminder, Rolly. Okay, now the fun part, the money. So do you want to go with the tax rate projection just to start at the end and then we can go back to yeah, the- yeah, yeah, so let's, let's get the bad news out of the way first. So, on, there's a couple of assumptions made, and, and Matt is part of this uh, process where we're projecting a 2.0% increase in the grand list, which I think is pretty good. But again, that's that's to be determined. The final grand list isn't published till June. Um, and then we bring that into the tax rate. So this is just an estimated 2.0 increase for 2021. Uh, using that number, we can run that through the budget requ you know, requirements and get to a 4.97% tax rate increase, which is about $41 a year more for every $100,000 of assessed value. So at $200,000 home, you'll be paying $82 more a year, or about $20 a quarter for your tax bill. And that's just municipal. School's going to be whatever it is when they get done messing with the school and 
state school rates and state funding and all that other business. The other thing that's affecting the rates, obviously, is the income sensitivity. So a lot of a lot of people that have, um, I think, incomes under 150 household or something will get aid. 170 will get aid from the state to help pay, which is its own political decision on that one. But um, we don't get into that. We just focus on the municipal side and. Just for reference, last year's tax rate increase was uh, 4.27, and we're looking at about four, four pennies, I guess, for that uh, increase that we're looking at. And if you look at the dollar amount increase, just for your reference, as you're looking at the budget, $160,000 more in tax revenue equals the uh, five, almost 5% 5 tax rate increase. So uh, maybe every Thirty-five thousand, thirty-five thousand or so dollars is a percent on the tax rate. So if you wanted to, if you wanted to start reducing that four point nine seven and confine thirty-five thousand dollars to cut or thirty-five thousand revenue, you could get down to three point nine seven. That's that's kind of what you're doing when you look at all these line items that we'll do next is. If you can find some savings or some, we can't find any new revenue. Um, we're, we've we have a pretty static revenue source, which is a few state grants plus property taxes. We don't have a lot of the other uh, sources of revenue that a lot of bigger municipalities have. So we're pretty much all about expenses and the grand list growth. Um, if you want to look at revenues, just really quickly, I can show you the. There's a correction, sort of a big correction in state payments withheld, that was combined, that line, the reason why it's $15,000 less, it was combined with a state grant for reappraisal last year. And it shouldn't have been for budgeting purposes because that reappraisal grant we get for about 15,000 really should have gone right to the reappraisal reserve fund for next reappraisal. Next reappraisal. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not revenue that we can count on to reduce the tax rate. It, it will reduce the bill on the, the appraisal, but it doesn't reduce the bill on the annual tax rate. So that's why it's a negative. Uh, pretty much static through the rest of it. Uh, town clerk recording fees are doing pretty well. We boosted that up to 34,000. And then state highway aid is pretty close to the actual number, maybe four or 5,000 less because we're not always confident on that, but we're projecting 138,000 next year. And then pretty much everything's flatlined. The library had a sort of a big increase in expenses. And I asked the trustees if they were gonna increase contribution from them uh, from 12 to something higher. And they said, no. So that's a flatline 12,000. And that 12,000 actually that comes into the town goes right back to the library reserve. So it's a, it's a net zero 12,000. Uh, and you'll see that if we, if I want to scoot right down to the library reserve at the very end of the budget, you'll see that we have library reserve down here at 12,000. So even though it looks good on the front side is 12,000 revenue, it's going right back out on the expense side. So again, it has no, no reduction of the tax rate. So I don't know if people had chances to go through the general government and highway and fire and library budgets, um, we can either go line by line or you can raise any questions now that you want a little more information on. Uh, we do have a 4% wage increase for everybody except for highway union employees. Right. Their union contract sets their increase at 3%. Ron, I see see in the state legislature they're going through uh possibly doing some extra tax on heating fuel and i didn't know how that was going to affect the fire departments and the town garage and you know the other municipal buildings because it could possibly add 20 percent to heating fuel costs to vermonters um, That's, i'll never pass <laughs> I've seen a lot of stuff pass. I have to work with Act 250 yeah. every day. So <laughs> <laughs> every, every time they keep going, they I can't tell you how many years they go near heating fuel. And it's like, wait a minute, you can't, you know, people don't have options. 
<clears throat> well, but, I understand. I just. But just you're right. That's the sort of green. thing. That's the sort of thing. If it happens during the year, it's just like the cost of everything this year. The way yeah. it's all it's all gone up. You just have I can. To, you I have can to fund it yeah, in your budget. No, that's true. Things you can't predict, right? So we've got four buildings that we heat. Uh, one is the highway garage, which so far has been lucky to operate on used uh, motor oil. Mm -hmm. So we have no heating fuel cost there. I think it's under $1,000 a year when they run low on the used oil. The town office is run on electric uh, due to our lease agreement with the village of Hyde Park. The library is, uh, he, uh, I think it's a combo of electric, maybe heating oil. And I think the fire department itself is heating oil. So there are, there are two buildings that are on number two, uh, fuel oil. So those potentially could be impacted by that. The other two won't be, as far as like, if everything stays normal. And I had something else that I had a question on. I didn't see on here. Maybe I missed it. But, you know, this new high-speed internet thing, is, are they going to be looking for anything from the town for that high-speed internet? Uh, you know, Su Susan and I had a really quick discussion about that today because, you know, being a regional entity, which is Lamoille Fiber CUD, they have not proposed, other than a soft plea from some of their board members, uh, that the town should use some of the ARPA money, right. which every town got this year, uh, but not operating budget money. So we didn't, we haven't added anything to the operating town budget for fiber, except for the town office, which we're upgrading now. And there's nothing for the regional entity there. And the select board hasn't really been pushed too hard to give up some of the ARPA money for broadband. We thought they were going to push a little harder, but it's been like a Hey, by the way, don't forget you guys have ARPA money and you should give some to the regional entity. But we haven't had a letter or a presentation or anything like that to make a case for it. Again, for anybody that's not familiar with ARPA, we have $740,000 of uh, federal ARPA recovery money that um, the select board has to decide how to spend over the next four years. Yeah. And we've, we've just um, barely gotten the, the, the feds have put out sort of their final guidelines because there's that stuff was changing so much. There, there were a few things, the project in North Hyde Park, um, looking at the good, the, the upgrading the ventilation systems in the, in the places that we need to do that will clearly qualify for, for that federal money. The rest of it, it's the good thing. You don't have to make a rapid decision. And, and I think that's sort of one of the things we can start to look at next year. And we've asked for input, but now that I think with sort of final, some final guidance, we can, um, we can start coming up and talking with the town about what are some, what are some possible uses of that money. Again, appreciating that it's one-time money, I, I would certainly think potentially the, you know, having some go into into high-speed internet is important. But we just sort of okay, and and we'll get some idea of what other communities are doing too, because it's always the feds here, the general guidelines, and you see people go out and they start spending the money, and then something will happen. They'll say, oh no, you have to give the money back. So I don't want to, I don't want us to be in that position either. So. I think some of that ARPA money is also a, a good benefit to buffer against this kind of future thing happening again, you know, but we also have to buffer against, of course, the internet could all crash. <laughs> right, right. So. And again, the buffers, we got we got to figure out yeah. how to spend it. Yeah. You can't, you can't save it. You have to, you have to yeah, spend no, I understand. It. It's right. just, it's, it's all to buffer against, you know, it's just like FEMA money to prevent, yeah, you know, that, a, a shutdown. That, yeah. Yeah, or when you're shut down, how are things more accessible? How can you, you know, how do you make it safer? So, uh, Susan, I just got a text from the Green Mountain Access TV people that uh, Zoom had a New England outage on their phone lines tonight. 
So it, it wasn't just our system. It was okay. A, it wasn't us. Okay. It was a system wide problem that Kim was having issues with trying to use lamps. Okay. okay. So just to let you know, it wasn't it wasn't our new Zoom. It was a, a unusual occurrence. That's what they always say. <laughs> uh, um, let's see. What are what are other questions that that folks have? I I I'd say I throw in now because Ron and I and 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 Deborah going over this again and again. It's, um, we know, you know, like the FEMA money still isn't in. Right now, I, I sort of feel, I asked Ron in creating this budget that sort of here's the, here's the maximum it would go up is the, what is it, the 4.9. Um, depending on, again, if the FEMA money comes in, some other things happen. Um, we could reduce some debt. We can, as I say, I think we just need to get through this and then 23 will really be an opportunity with, with the budget um, to get us back to that we, we don't have that much in the way of, of borrowing, um, that we're getting our reserves built up nice and, you know, and healthy, uh, that we're being able to put the you know, the, the, the long-term goal when I came on the board that, that, that Dave, Dave and Rowley have been pushing and we're slowly but surely making progress on is to get far enough ahead on our roads that we aren't just playing catch up every year, that we're actually getting in good foundations and the roads are being taken care of and we take care of them every year. So it's not running from crisis stretch of road to crisis stretch of road. And we're, we're, we're making some, I think we're, we're making some really good progress on that but of course every year if you keep putting the same amount of money into paving you pave less and less because everything costs so much more but but a, again I, I think really we're in a there's some things that are kind of unknown again when the whenever that FEMA money ever comes in I think I'm, I'm gonna be 100 years from now I'm gonna say when that FEMA money comes in you know but we can figure out exactly what we need to do to do with that and and do we uh uh do we do we pay off the excavator do we you know what what do we do so there'll be some um i think there'll be some excellent opportunities coming up in the once we get past town meeting and as money comes in to get our to keep hyde park in a good financial position because i think we really are in a good position right now and um and to, because there are there's a lot of equipment coming up with the with the with the road crew that that you know those are big price tags these days i have uh one more it's a multiple line item did the casualty and property insurance go down ron across the board from vlct uh we're Dealing with a, a big adjustment with property and casualty and workers comp, they, for some reason, they reformulated the costs and we had to book, book some more expenses in highway, other departments went down. So we, we try to spread those costs across each department and they, I just barely received a newsletter from BLCT uh, saying that they had the best banner year for, um, discounts and reimbursements to the members. So our VLCT is a group policy okay. of all Vermont towns. Okay. And they were, they were touting the benefits of the group policy because they're able to give back money from year to year. And they had a good year last year. So the projected rates are reduced next year. And then we, we did do some adjustments across departments where highway saw a bigger hit than other departments just because they reallocated the risk mm -hmm. and highway got hit a little bit more i guess you want to call it that okay. I, I got a question on the, mud, the budget sure uh and I, I i i think maybe you guys ought to consider putting the fast squad back into the fire department and the reason I say that is because they don't, they can't hold members for one thing. And the only member that ever shows up is Brad Currier. It's Brad. And Brad being the fire chief, it's going to be on the fire anyways. <coughs> and if we, you start looking at the training and the, the, the stifling and the, 
the, the, the, the two ADD units per year, which the fire department's got, and radios that they want out there calling, carrying radios that never go to a call. And hmm. I'm not saying give up the fire squad. I'm just saying put it back under the umbrella of the <coughs> fire department. I think you, you could save yourself a few thousand dollars a year there. I, 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 another question I have under the, the fast squad and emergency management is the one's been, been, been thrown on my side for years is the E911 signs. In 2019, because they were going to do this program, they were going to finish them 2020. Then the fire department got mad when that little scuttle back there, they didn't do them. And so they're going to do them all in 2021 by saying the last Thursday of the month that all they're going to go put up signs for their meetings. Well, that didn't happen because of different things and part of it, COVID and stuff. So even we must have a goddamn big pile of signs. They ain't been put up for three years or we've got seven or eight thousand dollars in, in the budget that we haven't spent yet because we budget three thousand dollars a year for signs that they haven't put up. So. So what a lot of money. I can, oh, let's see. I don't remember what the, what the conversation was, but I remember that we had this conversation with Brad when he came in. Hey, I Ron just know Rowley? that they hit, they hit my road and all the other roads around here. I think it was in the fall. They came through and did this whole yeah. area one night. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. About it was like eight thirty at nine o'clock at night. They were out setting signs in in the whole Northside Park area. Which the last okay. conversation I remember of Brad is that's when they were supposed to get to it was in the fall and they did. Well, they did, they didn't this year. Yeah, they did. No. Yeah, because Brad told they told us they didn't get to it because of the COVID. Huh. Well, they, they did them. I mean, less than, I don't know. I, I can look for an email to Ron, but yeah, they just did them up here in this uh, area. Dave, I think, I think Brad was, Brad was talking about getting down Centerville road towards Tenney Hill and heading down towards uh, uh, noise farm road and then not being able to get there on their schedule. Um, at, at the path they've been taking uh, over the years anyway, they started out near the village and then went up Battle Row and Cricket Hill right. And right. up that west side of town. Then they did North Hyde Park last year, which is where Matt lives. And now they're starting to come down Center Road to Garfield. Um, I, I think the, the problem that you're seeing is when we first started the program, uh, the select board said no more than 3,000 a year. Of course, that was six, seven years ago now. It's been a while. And six, seven years ago, we were able to buy, you know, X number of signs and posts for everybody. Now mm -hmm. we have to deal with about half that number because of the cost increased in steel. So they've really slowed down what they originally projected. And now we're stuck with um, not wanting to increase, not wanting to increase the 3,000. So it, it's slowing down the, project i was gonna say right yeah run your battery's running low <laughs> yeah so dave they did this area uh it was like the night before halloween they wow. did uh oh, north okay. park in that area yeah but uh you know get back to my my uh, uh original thing is i i think you uh, uh, putting the fast squad back into the higher uh, the fire department where it originally was to begin with. <clears throat> and Rolly, you must have some comments on that because you were there when that happened. Yeah, they did look into it, Dave, and it was, I don't know if they went to the lawyer or not, but somebody, I can't remember, that was quite a while ago, said do not put the two together have it its own entity. And I can't remember why. I mean, that was 10 years ago, 12, 15, 15, 20 years ago. So, but I do remember there was some big talk about that. And they didn't want to put it into the fire department because of, 
I, I can't remember what it was, to be honest with you, but I think maybe Ron should look into that with a lawyer. And, and um, Well, yeah, it sounds like something we ought to, we ought to I'd say, yeah. first of all, probably talk to Brad about. <laughs> yeah, I'll talk to Brad, let Brad know and, and, yeah. uh, and see how he feels about it. But I can't remember what the legal part was. And there was something that they didn't want to put it in. Uh, I don't remember. Yeah. Okay. No, well, I uh, know that's a, that's a good suggestion, Dave. We'll, we'll, we'll check it out. Cause you're right. That's been as, as, as hard and valiantly as they've tried, they just aren't being able to, to keep folks. Well, it's kind of, it's going back to the lister routine. You know, you're not the fire department itself. It's getting more and more difficult to find folks to do these sorts of jobs in communities. <clears throat> Yeah, and again, just make it known, and I'm not saying that we ought to give give up that fast rod because somebody ought to get there as fast as they can. But I'm just saying right, that right. they could go underneath the one thing and cut out some rate. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll start checking it out. Okay. Brian, got any thoughts, suggestions? I don't know. Just look at no. This. I've been I've been uh, entertaining myself, looking and see what I've got here while I've been talking. I I uh, don't see anything that we haven't already discussed. <laughs> it's like ten thousand dollars just for radios in that fire department. Yeah. I mean, you know, truck maintenance, oil changes, and stuff. I used to do all that when I was in the fire department. And, now you get a ten thousand dollar bill at the, at the end of the year for just doing that stuff. I mean, you could take when they ain't busy and get a lot of that oil change down down drive, but you know, there there takes an extra man. You know. Yeah. Do, do we? It's just fire department. Ah, do we need to to do? Wait a minute. Shall I go just? No, there it was. Okay. I went right past it. Forget it. <laughs> well, the, the only the only note the only note I have when you're talking about fire departments is we have two decent volunteer fire departments with a probably 30, 30 something, 35 committed residents in the in the neighborhood. They're not all Hyde Park, but between the two departments, yeah. Eden and Wolcott and Hyde Park, uh, and providing all our fire coverage. And the cost of both departments to the town taxpayers is about the cost for one full-time professional firefighter. Yeah. Yeah. So that's just some perspective that, you know, you really do have a really good situation with both departments right now at about 140,000 a year. Just saying. Yeah, no, that's, 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 that's good. Okay, anything else, I guess? Um, public information. I guess we, we need to, unless we've got some changes, approve the budget and move it. So move. Second. Okay, anybody, any more? I guess all in uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Uh, who made, sorry, who made the motion on that? I missed that. Ryan. I did, Ryan. And, and Roland seconded? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, when should we, okay, we'll get, we'll get, uh, hopefully three of us can get down there tomorrow morning to, uh, you can just leave a stack of papers for us and we'll sign all the yeah, things. Just, right. Just, 
Yep, yeah, just inside my office door, there's the warning that needs to be signed. There's the mileage certificate that needs to be signed. And the other one that we have to talk about is the bonding resolution. So we'll need a vote on that next if that when that comes up right. tonight. But okay. there's, there's three documents that three or more people should sign tomorrow. If you can get I'll try, down I'll try to be down here by nine. Thank you. Okay. Hey, Roy. What? Yep. Roy. Go ahead. Can, can you make it down there? <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen, Dave. You know why? No, but um, I mean, I, I'm probably Chastity. We get all the Chastity. Chastity could probably do it. Okay, because I'll still be Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Right. Right. Be, Brian can get there, Susan can get there, and we'll get a hold of Chastity. Somebody will, Susan or okay. I, I, I know what I got to do tomorrow. Ron, yeah, can Chastity sign if she's not been at the meeting to vote for any of this stuff? Oh, no, that's right. That's, a, no, that's a good question. We don't know if she's in favor or not. Usually, only if oh. you're in favor, you would sign something, right? right. Hey, Kim, Dave, Kim, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. can can. Can you, can we leave the papers? I am, I'll probably be around about 4.30. Is that possible or no? Um, well, I have no, to have everything not. posted before the end of the day. Dave, oh, yeah. Dave, how about if when I go down, yes. I'll get, make sure you have them signed. Um, I'll sign them. And then how about if I drive them up to your house and leave them on your doorstep and you can sign them and I'll bring them back down. Yeah, or, or uh, uh, that, that'll that work, be glad to do that, or uh, uh, I'll give you permission right now, so you know I'm in favor of everything on it, if you can sign my name initial, it, that'd be fine with me too. Whatever, yeah, you can do, you can you do that as an alternate, or anybody could sign with the initial, just because we have it, you know, Dave approving it tonight. Right, Does, how's and that I, work? Is that okay, Kim? I think that'll be fine. Okay. And, and I'll okay. do the same thing, so. Okay. Okay. Brian, so Brian, you you're, want to Brian, you're starting it off with the signatures, it sounds like, and then Susan's gonna take care of it from there. <laughs> yeah. Hey Brian, why don't why don't you be you and Roly and I'll be Dave and myself? <laughs> <laughs> you mean the usual? <laughs> yeah, you, that's right, usual. <laughs> <laughs> Can my wife do it? She signs everything else for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, for many years, I used to laugh and say, if my husband actually signed something and I took it in the bank and they looked at it, they'd go, who the yeah. hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a common happening there. <laughs> okay. After, after 50 years Saturday, that should be a given. Oh, oh, 50. All right. Congratulations. Yeah. Happy anniversary. Yeah. yeah. She, she put up with this thing for 50 years. That's amazing. Yeah. She, she's a saint. That's a, <laughs> I, I was just going to say she's stubborn. <laughs> if, if this was a government, she'd be getting the purple heart. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, he's somewhere nearby. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Okay, what else do we need, Ron? <laughs> okay, so we need a motion on the uh, bond, bond resolution. So I got up on the screen, which I think you can see if you're on uh, the yeah. resolution of necessity for public improvement project uh, is required as part of our bond application materials, which if you if we do decide to go through the bonding would be submitted to the state uh, Vermont Bond Bank in May, I think, for a summer bond award. Yep, for bonds, yep. Uh, or we can get this all done tonight, and then you can still change your mind to do a commercial bank with the same documents. So it's really just an option for bonding if you want to go there. The $275,000 is a is on the light side for bonding. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, typically those are you know, 20, 30-year bonds for $2.5 to kind of stuff. In this case, uh, you, you, it's, it's probably more on the commercial loan 
side than a bond side, but we have some time to figure this, you know, figure it out. We just need to have this resolution done and then the voter approval. And then just like with the other question we had, uh, it gives you the option to finally, you know, make the decision down, down the road. So if, if everybody's had a chance to read this, it's just a, it's a one pager basically saying that you need to borrow because you don't have the cash available and it's for public purposes and the amount borrowed may be reduced by federal grant aids or other financial resources uh, before you actually take the bond out. Yeah, so again, this is just creating an option for it. We don't have to do it. So do we do we want to go ahead and do this now or? Boy, I move we uh, accept the resolution of uh, necessity for public and um, improvement project as written. Second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? We're good. Okay. That's, a, that's the third document that's just yep. inside the office door. <laughs> Kim, Kim saw where they were, so she'll... She'll be able to know when uh, those are complete. But I think for Kim's purposes, if if all of the signing can be done by noon, that will give her the yep. afternoon to finish yep. up her posting. Well, nope, that's, that's no problem. Brian's going to be there at 9. I'll come down a little bit after. The two of us will do the four signatures and we'll be all set. Perfect. What else do you think we can sign them up for, Brian? <laughs> I bet we can find something. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, Kim, put your thinking hat on. We'll get these two into trouble. <laughs> I think you'll okay. find some of those things on the morning looking for uh, positions to be filled, and you can oh, do an application yeah. right there. So, okay. It's a couple of new listers. <laughs> okay. I think Does that take care of everything, Ron. Yeah. I just got a uh, text from Chastity. So, can you give me one second? Yeah. Just want to see what's going on. Three. Go, go. All right. All right. I don't know. She's 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 not talking right now, but looks like she missed an email or two. So hey, yeah. I'll talk I'll talk to her after you guys are done. I think that's going back to the agenda. I think we're I think that's it, right? Yeah, I just want to make a note that, uh, that, and Susan already did with the new guidance for the U.S. Treasury. Hopefully, that makes the use of the ARPA money easier. But uh, there's still a little more research to do, so we'll come back with that at maybe after town meeting day. Yeah, I'd say after town meeting. Ron, Ron has found uh, some towns are starting to come up with some good ways to sort of uh, list all their projects and if it's possible and just a, a variety of things. So again, I think this is one of those things putting a little planning in getting some good input it'll be and i think pretty soon uh, as it, once it's finalized i expect different organizations will start asking for money okay i guess if that's it um everybody um everybody all set matt got anything else you want to add more questions no nope. Um, a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Okay, we got a second? Second. All right, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. 
Take Thank care you of yourself, all very much. Please. Yeah, right. Feel better.